got them here in the Northwest. We got lots of places for your new Jeep. From Dick Hanna Chrysler Jeep Dodge in the giant Vancouver Automall. We got mountain passes, fishing streams, hunting fields. Your Jeep takes you through snow to ski trips. But look at this. We've also got concerts and posh restaurants and the symphony. Your Jeep just loves taking you to all those places, forging its own roads or keeping to the existing ones equally well. And here's one of the largest Jeep inventories in the entire Northwest, making Dick Hanna one of the largest dealers. We're pretty proud of that. We're proud of our job finding the perfect vehicle for you at the best price possible, too. If you're looking to buy one, even if you have a challenging credit situation, we know the vehicles and how to get you financed. Check out our online reviews and then come on over to Dick Hanna Chrysler Jeep Dodge in the giant Vancouver Auto Mall during the Jeep Celebration event right between the bridges with no Washington sales tax to Oregon residents. Dick Hanna dealerships. Believe in nice. Four wheels to 20 wheels. Diesel trucks, yeah, we fix those. Ultimate Truck Service. If you rely on a truck for your business, Ultimate Truck Services is what you need to keep one of your biggest assets on the road and running properly. Our highly experienced diesel technicians specialize in Cummins, Detroit, and Cat engines. Online at ultimatetruckservice.com. The most news, traffic, and weather 24-7. On air, online, mobile. This is FM News 101 KXL FM. Portland, Vancouver, Salem. It's 1 o'clock. This is CBS News on the Hour, sponsored by Zoom Video Conferencing. I'm Gary Nahn. There are multiple fatalities and injuries in a shooting in Anne Arundel County, Maryland. The scene at the Capital Gazette newspaper in Annapolis is active and ongoing. CBS News correspondent Jeff Pegues. What we know is one person is in custody. Four people are now confirmed dead. Whether there are more injuries, we just don't know that right now. And in fact, investigators both on the local level and the federal level are still getting up to speed here. We know that the F- ATF, the FBI is responding along with local uh, police there in the Annapolis area. I was told by a source that city officials are moving in or have moved into an emergency operations center as they deal with this unfolding tragedy. There is late word. Six people have been injured. The shooting in Annapolis, Maryland, is north of Washington, D.C., south of Baltimore. CBS's Adriana Diaz. This, of course, reminds us of uh, another news organization um, who was under attack just years ago in 2015, the CBS affiliate WDBJ in Roanoke, Virginia. That's where a reporter uh, and another employee were killed on camera. Um, This is the, the first major shooting in another news organization in the U.S. The FBI now headed to the scene in Annapolis. Law enforcement reports it is too early to determine a motive in the shooting. Again, four dead, six injured in a shooting in Anne Arundel County, Maryland, in Annapolis. President Trump is in Mount Pleasant, north of Milwaukee. Moments ago, we broke ground on a plant that will provide jobs for much more than 13,000 Wisconsin workers. The Foxconn Electronics Factory is a $10 billion project. First Lady Melania Trump is in Tucson, Arizona, meeting with Border Patrol agents and touring immigration facilities there. I'm looking forward for our discussion and to tour the facility. And um, I'm here to support you and uh, give my help, whatever I can, for behalf of children and the families. The Trump-Putin summit is set. The two presidents will meet July 16th in Helsinki. They've held talks twice before on the sidelines of international meetings last year. But this will be the first formal summit between the two in a city that has hosted past U.S. and Russian or Soviet meetings. The timing is interesting. Mr. Trump will sit with Vladimir Putin in Helsinki just days after he meets with the NATO allies in Brussels. Of course, NATO was formed as a check on Soviet aggression. President Trump says Russia's involvement in Ukraine and Syria are issues he'll raise with Putin. The Dow Jones Industrials closing up 89 points. This is CBS News. Stay connected to the Northwest and the world with FM News 101 KXL. Good afternoon, Portland. Happy Thursday. It's 103. I'm Jordan Schultz. A bullhorn blared just before daylight this morning, telling Occupy PDX protesters to move away from ICE headquarters. KXL's Rosemary Reynolds spent a lot of time there. 
And she says neighbors were happy to see people being moved out and their belongings hauled away. As a line of federal police too deep at times moved in blocking the street, protesters dished out the verbal ugliness. Some of it came my way. This woman reached out to hit me with her two-way radio. I hope that the grandchildren hate you for doing this to people's lives. Please, this is not something I care to be followed around and recorded. Anna tells me it hasn't been fun living right across the street from the protesters. Today, she says, they showed their true colors. Those uh, people over there have demonstrated a verbal violence nearly every single day, and they did it uh, towards those officers hurling just awful obscenities. I mean, they're here to protect the state of Oregon, and there should be, you know, a, a certain degree of respect for them. Rosemary Reynolds, FM News 101. It's 104 traffic and weather next. Zoom video conferencing, featuring video and audio clarity with screen sharing. Free accounts are available at zoom.us. That's zoom.us. Zoom video conferencing. Northwest Armory just got in a large shipment of federal ammunition at special pricing, and they're passing on the savings to you. Federal American Eagle Ambo has consistent performance with reliable function, feeding, and ignition. It has quality brass cases, and it's loaded to the same specs as Federal's premium loads, but with a more practical price. Northwest Armory has Federal American Eagle 223 ammo at a special price of $660 a box, $165 for a case of $500. Northwest Armory also has Federal Premium 22 long rifle ammo in the 525 value pack for $19.99. That's $19.99 a box for 525 rounds of Federal Premium 22 long rifle while supplies last, so hurry in before it sells out. Federal 223 and 22 long rifle available at both Northwest Armory locations in Milwaukee on McLaughlin in Tigard on Pacific Highway. Be sure to check out their website nwarmory.com where you can order online for in-store pickup and tell them Lars sent you. Portland's most traffic 24-7 sponsored by Fred Meyer. They're your one-stop shop for great 4th of July celebrations. You'll find low prices on everything from fresh food to the grill to cook it on. Fred Meyer, what's on your list today? How is that drive looking, Brett Recamp? I-5 southbound, an absolute parking lot through the Twilliger Curves. A crash near Boone's Ferry blocking, blocking two lanes, and the delay is about 45 to 50 minutes easily from Multnomah down past 217 on southbound I-5. Inbound on the Sunset, a disabled vehicle right at the tunnel blocks the right-hand lane. Thanks, Brett. Not an easy afternoon at all. KGW's Rod Hill with the weather. No signs of hot weather over the next seven days. Uh, 70 today, 75 tomorrow, near 80 this weekend. And right now, July 4th, partly cloudy and 77. I'm KGW's Rod Hill for FM News 101. And I'm Jordan Schultz. Check back several times a day. Stay connected with FM News 101. Something big. It's going to happen. Stand by playback. And now, Lars. Real Red Meat Radio should be played at high volume. This is the Lars Larson Show, broadcasting from Portland to Seattle and all of Oregon and Washington. We are a nation of immigrants, but we are also a nation of laws. This is Honestly Provocative Talk with Lars Larson. Your voice is beautiful. I've heard it for a long time. You are enjoying the miracle of radio. Now, here's Lars Larson. The hate fuels me. It just keeps me going. On FM News 101, KXL. Welcome back to the Lars Larson Show. Today, we're doing something special that we hope to do with a lot of other public policy issues down the line. We're featuring a one-hour debate between two of the most vocal advocates for and against the argument that human beings have caused global warming or climate change or whatever you want to call it, and that humans must cure it by changing our behavior in significant and, I think, damaging ways. First, I have to disclose my dog in the fight. I believe our globe has warmed. The last ice age peaked about 21,000 years ago, officially ended 11,500 years ago. If it had not warmed, we would not be doing a talk show right here, and an ice sheet would occupy the space that we're in. But that was before recorded human history. Uh, Second, I believe that there have been more recent warming and cooling periods, some of them lasting for decades, some of them lasting for centuries. I don't believe those were caused by humans, and I don't think that we can cure warming or cooling in any meaningful way. Let me introduce our two opponents. We won't be taking calls this hour, but we will hear from David Appel, who makes his home here in the Northwest and writes frequently about today's subject. He has a PhD in physics and math, has worked as a systems engineer and a software developer. Mr. Appel has written to me often and challenged some of the things I say on the radio, so my response was I invited him to come here and debate today subject. 
Chuck Weiss, I have to admit, my dog in the fight, I've been friends with for a long time. And when I was a kid, not that much younger than him, I watched him on television when, as a teenager, he was one of the youngest weather forecasters on television in the Northwest. Chuck is a meteorologist trained at Oregon State University. He's also a retired airline pilot, and he's a fervent critic of anthropogenic global warming and, more recently, what's come to be called climate change. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. And for the sake of brevity, I'm going to refer to you by your first names and you're free to do the same david you're the challenger and i have a strong point of view counter to yours i'm going to let you begin you wrote to me chuck weiss is wrong about climate change global warming is unequivocal you have a minute and a half to make your opening case all right thanks lars i want to say thanks for inviting me on your show that was good of you glad to do it um the thing i want to say to begin with is that climate change isn't a scientific problem we know enough science now that we know that climate change is happening. We know that it's almost all due to humans. It's not a technological problem. We have the technological means to solve it if we have the will. We could certainly do some more research, but we can solve this problem. I think it's really a moral and ethical problem, and that is what do we owe to future generations? What do we owe to the poor of this country and the poor of the world? Uh, America is a very wealthy country. If the globe warms five degrees Fahrenheit or more, we can probably deal with that. I'm not sure about agriculture, but we can buy air conditioners and we can uh, buy air conditioned cars. We can deal with that. The people who will really suffer on our account and the account of the EU and other rich countries are the poor in, in the poor parts of the world, Africa, India, Southeast Asia. They will not be able to adapt at present in the way that we'd be able to adapt. They'll suffer the heat waves. They'll suffer the extreme rainfall that we've been seeing. And they're just not going to be able to deal with it in the same way that we are. Okay, I'll stop there. Thanks. David, thank you very much. Chuck, you have a minute and a half to make your case. He's laid out some red meat for you. Okay, Lars, as a professional meteorologist qualified to look at the climate issue, I've been studying this since James Hansen made his infamous declaration to the U.S. Senate back in 1988. Back then, and contrary to the founding principles taught in atmospheric science, Hansen told the world at this Senate conference, as a self-declared climate expert, that he had determined through his own work that he was predicting dire consequences for the expected changes in the Earth's climate due to human CO2 emissions that were supposed to cause catastrophic warming of the Earth, melting of the polar ice caps, devastating flooding from sea level rise, and increasingly destructive severe storms, including hurricanes and tornadoes, that would accompany such a warming of the climate. After hearing this news, I was curious as to how the founding principles in atmospheric science must have been shown to be wrong because empirical results of all those who had studied this issue, like me, post-Einstein, came to a much different conclusion in that atmospheric CO2 is not a climate thermostat. It does not control the Earth's temperature, but in fact, the Earth's hydrological cycle maintains the Earth's temperature and controls the amount of radiation leaving the Earth that creates the greenhouse effect. After 30 years of giving Hansen and those in his camp the time needed to demonstrate whether they had proven founding principles wrong, the record shows a trail of failures in most every part of the climate system. Today, in baiting Mr. Appel, I will highlight the failures, expose wrongdoing, and show why it is a complete waste of time and a fraud to claim humans have any control over the climate system and can curb climate change with carbon taxes or any sort of emission reduction regulations. Thanks. That's my open. Thank you, Chuck. David, I want to start with you. As, as Chuck just mentioned, we didn't compare notes on this, but I, I noticed that five days ago, we marked the 30th anniversary of the speech that Chuck mentioned. Dr. James Hansen appear, appeared before the U.S. Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee, and he said, this is a quote from 30 years and five, five days ago, global warming has reached a level such that we can ascribe with a high degree of confidence a cause and effect relationship between the greenhouse effect and observed warning. In my opinion, the greenhouse effect has been detected. It is changing our climate now. Now, my question for you, because you skipped past this part and said, global warming is real. Here's how we solve it. And here's why we're not solving a moral problem. The models predicted global warming. They failed in that warming, as predicted, didn't happen. So folks who believe in global warming change the name of their cause to climate change, neither warming nor cooling. If those predictions were wrong, 
Why should anybody believe the predictions today of what's going to happen 20 or 30 or 50 years from now? Well, first of all, those predictions weren't wrong. And I'll talk about that in a second. But the switch from global warming to climate change, the terminology, first of all, climate change has been used by scientists in the past, going back into the early 1900s, early 2000s, early 1900s. But the first climate model that predicted warming was made on pencil and paper in 19, 1896 by a Swede named Svante Herrenius. And basically, we've been doing the same physics since then for 125 years. Um, the, Hansen's model did not fail. You have to compare. Any model is, makes some assumptions about what will happen in the future. Because we don't know what humans are going to do in the future. We don't know what they're going to emit, how they're going to change their behavior, how their energy choices will change. Hansen assumed a certain scenario for methane and for chlorofluorocarbons. It turns out what actually happened soon after Hansen, uh, soon after Hansen made his prediction, the Montreal, Treat Montreal Protocol Treaty drastically reduced chlorofluorocarbons. And that changes the prediction. And if you follow what... Go ahead. I'll Chuck, stop right there. tell me this. We're, we're doing time here so everybody gets a fair shake. Chuck, he says global warming is happening and the models actually work. Did they? No, the models didn't work. Uh, if you look at every single one of the modeling performances, the only thing these guys do now is they reinitialize them and when they do their IPCC reports. In other words, they, do them, uh, they, they update them to the current time and then run them forward to get curve fitting. If you look at the original predictions made that David has talked about from Jim Hansen and others who ran these models, they have miserably failed and over-predicted warming by a factor of anywhere from two to three. And I know a lot about these models as a meteorologist because they are not any more special than the ones we already use. They're weather forecast models that are integrated to do, uh, or, or that are configured to do large time changes or, or large time integrations. So they have to sacrifice a lot of quality out of those models to be, to, be, to be able to get them to work, and they hoped that they would be able to pull a temperature rabbit out of the hat when they ran them, but they didn't. They've completely failed. They can't keep track of energy, and they have no hope of working in the, in the uh, for foreseeable future. Let me ask David a question before we go to break, because we're going to have to go to break here in a second, but David David, you say they worked and global warming happened. And yet, I'm told that there's a term called the pause, that somehow the global warming that was forecast to happen after about 1978, 70, or 1997, 98, 99, the scientists said, well, for some reason it paused, and they can't explain why. If the global, uh, global warming prediction models worked, and they said it's going to warm this much, and then they were forced to come out and say, well, for some reason the global warming has paused, what caused the pause? Well, first of all, the pause went away, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But there were seven periods in the 20th century where there was such a pause. After each one of them, warming resumed uh, as expected. Now, when it turns out that when NOAA scientists looked at the pause, and they looked especially at ocean temperatures, which were taken by ships, pulling buckets up over the side of the ship, uh, that was less accurate. The buckets lose some heat when they pour up over the side of the ship. Instead, they looked at where the water comes actually into the into the ship from the front. They looked at the temperatures there. And that difference was a positive difference, and it did away with the pause, basically. It showed that the, the data show, the data were l too low, bias too low. And there was really more warming than we had So you adjusted the data? Adjusting data is done in every science I understand that. I'm going to get Chuck's response to that when we come back. We're talking weather wars today about climate, climate change, global warming, whatever you prefer to call it. We're live in the Bloodworks studio and on the Radio Northwest Network throughout the Northwest. And we'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to The Lars Larson Show. Portland's... Okay, Lars, this traffic is brought to you by Western Construction Systems. Whether it's foundation repair, earthquake retrofitting, basement waterproofing, or drainage systems, westernconstructionsystems.com, the integrity of your foundation is their specialty. Guaranteed, CCB 94222. And this problem on I-5 South right near Boone's Ferry is not going away. Still, only the left lane is getting by, and we have a crash involving a semi-truck along with another car at least here, and then we have debris on the road on southbound I-5. The delay is about 50 minutes from Multnomah through the 99W area down past 217. Southbound I-5 is at a standstill 
as you come past 217. Inbound sunset still slow from the zoo to the tunnel after an earlier disabled vehicle. I'm Brett Recamp. Stay connected with Portland's most traffic 24-7 on FM News 101. Here's KJW's Rod Hill. Best chance of a spotty shower today will be north of Portland and also back up along the north coast. Otherwise, most areas will see partly cloudy skies this afternoon as temperatures get up to about 70. I'm KGW's Rod Hill for FM News 101. You know it's been about a year that I've been sleeping on my pillow, and you've been hearing me talk about how drastically it can change your sleep. It's certainly done a lot of good for me. I wake up feeling rested without any soreness in my neck or my back. So what are you waiting for? You need a my pillow. It's amazing what a difference it makes for you. It certainly made a difference for me, and I'll save you some money. Go to MyPillow.com, click on the four-pack special, and type in promo code LARGE. you get 50% off a four-pack of pillows. That's two premium my pillows and two go-anywhere pillows. You get a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money-back guarantee. You've got nothing to lose. To get 50% off a four-pack of pillows, go to MyPillow.com and click on the radio special or call 800-290-9466 and use promo code LARGE to get 50% off two MyPillow premium pillows and two go anywhere pillows that's 800-290-9466 or go to mypillow.com and use promo code lars to get this unbelievable deal from mypillow.com we tend to use a lot more water during the summer months when we're watering our lawns plants and gardens but much of that water use comes from overwatering. fortunately there are two simple things you can do to avoid wasting water one aim your sprinklers so they're watering your lawn and garden and not the pavement And two, water your lawns about one inch per week. Use a watering gauge so you know when to turn your water off. So live it up this summer, but do your part in using water wisely. For more information on water-saving tips, visit conserveh2o.org. Sponsored by the Regional Water Providers Consortium. I'm Tom Shane. Before we even opened our doors for business, I decided that Shane Company would be the one jeweler in town who would commit to taking care of their customers' jewelry for life for free. The reason I was so comfortable and so confident offering a free lifetime warranty was because we designed the jewelry to last a lifetime. By having our own design team and the best jewelers, we set the highest standards for construction, quality, and craftsmanship. And today, we still have the best warranty in the business, which even includes the center stone. We'll clean and inspect your Shane Company jewelry at no charge as often as you wish. If something happens or looks like it might happen, we'll take care of it for free. Most jewelers hide behind the fine print in their warranties. At Shane Company, there is no fine print. Now you have a friend in the jewelry business. Shane Company and ShaneCo.com. Well, we have a ton of furniture. We sort of focus in on what we believe are some of the best sellers, and we backed them up deep in our warehouse. It's Brett Recamp and Jeff Parker with Parker Furniture and Design in Thomasville, Portland, says all that in-stock outdoor furniture is an extra 10% off during the 4th of July sale, and all backed by over 65 years of service. That's definitely the way we think. All Ellen and Thomasville are also 50% off for the 4th of July sale at Parker Furniture and Design on Beaverton Hillsdale in Thomasville, Portland, and Delta Park. Parker Furniture! Quality and value for every generation. Over 300,000 veterans have received the care and benefits they've earned because Paralyzed Veterans of America was there. If you need help with a claim or just navigating the system, contact us at pva.org. To prevent muscle cramps in your legs and feet, use TheraWorks Relief. This fast-acting foam is clinically proven to relieve leg and foot cramps. Get TheraWorks Relief today at select Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid pharmacies or TheraWorksRelief.com. Ask your pharmacist for TheraWorks Relief. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. ZipRecruiter posts your job to over 100 job boards with just one click. And then their smart matching technology finds the right candidates. Try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Dad, what are you doing? Cramming for college. I'm the one going to college. Yeah, but we need to figure out how we're going to pay for it all. Discover Student Loans. Discover does student loans? Yeah, they're one of the top student loan lenders in the country. It takes 15 minutes or less to apply and there are no fees for the life of the loan. Best of all, I can earn cash rewards if I get good grades. Really? Yeah, we still have time to apply and get a great rate. So I can just chill. College kids still say that, right? No one says that, Dad. Really? Yeah. Visit discoverstudentloans.com to apply today. Limitations apply. It's Cooper and Lucinda on Portland's Afternoon News. Tragedy in Maryland. Several have been shot and killed in a newsroom. We'll have the latest. And riled up protesters at the ICE office. The impact on ICE and nearby families. Today at 4. FM News 101 KXL.
This is the Lars Larson Show on FM News 101. Welcome back to the Lars Larson Show. Weather Wars this hour, live on the Radio Northwest Network and live from the Bloodworks studio. I'm pleased to be here. We're not taking calls during this hour, but David Appel is with me, who believes in global warming, that it's caused by humans primarily, he said, and that it can be cured by relatively easy and available choices, and it's merely a moral decision that we have decided not to do that and to cheat future generations out of a legitimate lifestyle style let me go to chuck because david left off and let me put a finer point on it did the models these climate models that originally said were predictors uh, or we uh, has been said were predictors of global warming say when we reach a certain level of co2 in the atmosphere we will have inexorable warming and that that was the prediction that was made or do i have that wrong no you don't have it wrong and the models have predicted a steady climb in temperature as the co2 levels went up and the fact of the matter is the temperatures didn't uh, continue to go up they paused in the year 2000 the models missed this the pause continued until uh, to, uh, to statistical significance until the el nino that we just got through it rose slightly because of that but that's all natural and now it's coming back down again it's only 0.18 degrees above the 30 year mean but Lars, we talk about this warming point and- no Hold on, I want to put a punctuation point. 0.18 degrees, less than one-fifth of one degree. Yes, it's uh, above the 30-year mean right now. That's currently where the temperature was at by the uh, the satellites that are keeping track of global temperatures. And by the way, those are far more accurate than the methods that David was referring to. They have tortured that record uh, beyond recognition, and we have several papers that were already okay, written Let me stop it. you for a second and go back to David. David, if you take a 30-year mean, not an average, but a mean of temperature, and you're only one, less than one-fifth of one degree above a 30-year average, that would suggest that that is not, cli- that's not global warming and it's not climate change. How do you answer that? Well, 0.18 degrees Celsius, right? Right. That's about 0.3 degrees Fahrenheit. A third of a degree. That's, that's pretty big. Right now, in the last 30 years, the globe has warmed at one degree Fahrenheit total. So we're talking about a good bit of that warming already. Uh, Oregon has warmed at 1.1 degrees Fahrenheit. Alaska, 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, Global land, here's the thing people don't realize, the land warms about 50% faster than the globe as a whole. So the land has warmed at 1.6 degrees Fahrenheit in the last 30 years. When you hear people talk about a 2 degree C limit, 2 degree C Celsius, yeah. land, you add 50%, that's about 3 degrees Celsius. Then you, then you convert to Fahrenheit. We're talking about almost 6 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, let me warming. jump to Chuck at this point since I jumped over to you. How do you answer that? Uh, he's wrong. Uh, I've looked at these climatological records for Oregon. To begin with, all the warming he's talking about was a fabrication done by taking urban data from places like Portland, where urban growth boundaries have increased, and that's added heating. It's the urban heat island effect. We already know about it. Explain the urban heat island. That, that's just the increase in temperature in a localized area because of buildings and structures and land use change. Asphalt, concrete, exactly, rebar, exactly. All that. And there was warming in those, indisputably. But we look at other places, if we look at all the temperature records in Oregon away from these urban areas, some of them have actually cooled. Salem hasn't had any change throughout the entire time. And Eugene, this, uh, what I just got from Mark Albright, uh, Eugene's record has actually cooled a full degree Fahrenheit uh, since the, in the last 28 years when their climate model forecasted the temperature was going to go up by over three degrees. They're in error by over four, and they don't even have the sign right. Let me jump back to David. David Appel, how do you answer that? He's saying you're you're cherry-picking the data from big urban areas where a lot of concrete and steel and construction causes there to be a heat island because the sun reacts differently when it falls on asphalt and then when it falls on a green farmer's field. And he says we're actually seeing areas of the country that are cooling instead. Scientists were the ones who discovered the urban heat island effect. They've been well aware of it for 30, 40 years. Well, hold on a, se- hold on a second. <laughs> I don't think you had to be a scientist to say, if I have a field no. full of grass, but- it's not going to be as hot under the sun as a flat asphalt sure. parking lot that will soak up the sun. I can walk past a concrete wall and tell you that without sure. even a thermometer. Sure. So don't try and make it no. sound too scientific. But they recognize that these can affect temperature trends and temperature, temperature changes. And they have corrected for these or they look at rural stations where the warming is the same. 70% of the globe is, over the, is uh, the ocean. Temperatures over the ocean are warming almost nearly as fast as temperatures over land. Not quite as fast because he can go more readily go down, down than in land. But these, these 
Monsters in the Ocean show it's very fast warming. Let me ask well. Chuck then. Like, Chuck, you talk about satellite data, which ought to be the most accurate data you've got, where it's measuring what? From orbit, it's looking at infrared pictures. What does that show? Since 1978, when the satellite, or 79, since the satellites first started tracking temperature, Lars, where we're at now is about a half a degree Celsius warmer. But uh, I was going to get to this business of talking about warming and cooling. You know, the, the issue, the main crux of this whole issue that goes to uh, Appel's claim of having to socioeconomically solve this problem, it goes to assigning blame. And he keeps saying CO2 is causing the problem. But there is a specific signature that you have to look for if you're going to be able to correctly apply the blame for warming, whether it's natural or whether it's man-made. And there's two things that have to happen in order to validate the claim that carbon dioxide was causing these changes. The first one is the radiation signature that you look at at the ground from space. The satellites track all this stuff. And so if you're going to have CO2 and these greenhouse gases increase, it's kind of like the analogy of throwing another blanket over yourself, and you're trapping that energy from getting out. And, it, and looking at it from space, the satellites would show that the outgoing long wave radiation is decreasing. That's a requirement. The second is when the temperature at the ground responds to this, you have to see a warming signature high up in the troposphere that is much faster and warmer warming faster than the ground we, we got to do a break right here chuck will be right back david appel will be right back it's weather wars it's live on the radio northwest network and you're listening to the lars larson show stay connected to the northwest and the world with fm news 101 kxl Good afternoon, Portland. It's 1.30. Hope you're enjoying it so far. I'm Jordan Schultz. An active shooter was reported at a newspaper in Annapolis, Maryland. CBS News correspondent Jeff Glor has the latest. The shooter we are being told right now by police is in custody. But the latest is in Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, we're told four are dead after a shooting at the Capitol Gazette, which is a newspaper in that area. Sources from law enforcement say there are many more injured as well, and this happened to be this attacker. So they're saying that the, he used a shotgun in the shooting at the Capitol Gazette paper newsroom in Annapolis, Maryland. Checking the markets, closing bell numbers today. Uh, all in the green, the Dow finished up near 100, the NASDAQ up 59, the S&P 500 up 17. <laughs> Now, Portland's most traffic 24-7, sponsored by Batteries Plus Bulbs. Is your phone on the blink? We fix it. Repair Center will fix it fast. Book your repair now and get 10 bucks off at BatteriesPlus.com. How's that drive, Brett Recamp? Just seconds ago, they opened up I-5 southbound, the lanes at Boone's Ferry. A semi-truck was involved in a crash there, and the delay reaching over an hour from Multnomah past 99W and 217. Hopefully we'll start getting thinning out in that area quickly on southbound I-5. Still very, very slow through that area down toward 217. Northbound I-5 heading it up toward the Markham Bridge. We have some pretty slow traffic through those Twilliger curves, especially at the Markham. It's about 18 minutes from 217 into I-405. All right. Thank you, Brett. Appreciate that. KGW's Rod Hill has our forecast. Best chance of a spotty shower today will be north of Portland and also back up along the north coast. Otherwise, most areas will see partly cloudy skies this afternoon as temperatures get up to about 70. I'm KGW's Rod Hill for FM News 101. Hey there, it's Lars. If you're renting or a current homeowner looking to upsize, downsize, or just try out a new neighborhood, now's the time to make your move. And with mortgage rates still competitively low and home equity on the rise, you can feel confident you're making the right investment for your future. So get the pre-approval process started now before you shop around, and you'll be one step closer to your new dream home. Call my friends, the salary-based mortgage consultants at American Financing. You'll learn more about down payment assistance programs as well as loan programs they can be customized to meet your current financial goals. You've heard me talk about using them myself, and I have several times. I guarantee you I'll use American Financing again. That, they are that good. It's worth it to take 10 minutes and give them a call or fill out an application online. American Financing makes the process easy and enjoyable. Call 503-452-4444. That's 452-4444 or AmericanFinancing.net. NMLS 182334.
I'm going to do something memorable this 4th of July and celebrate my freedoms. That's why I'm going to Arm Yourself Gun Store in Hillsboro for the 4th of July 10-day sale. At Arm Yourself, you'll be treated like family and not pressured into anything. Matt and his team just want to help. Great savings through July 8th with all new firearms, just 10% above wholesale cost. That's just 10% above wholesale. You'll also find 15% off store-wide on their incredible selection of products. Come down today or visit armyourselfstore.com and save big. Better-known company, 15% off deal excludes all Benchmade knives and bulk ammo. Tune into KXL this Sunday at 11 and join Jeff Dixon, the retirement coach, for The Jeff Dixon Show. Securities and advisory services offered through Madison Avenue Securities, LLC, MAS. Member FINRA and SIPC. A registered investment advisor, MAS and Northwest Financial and Tax Solutions are not affiliated companies. Your diesel is different, so don't go broke taking it to those dealers. Bring it to Precision Diesel. We handle it all, you name it. Precision Diesel Truck and Equipment Repair. Getting you back on the road quickly is our number one priority. Conveniently located between Jubits and Freightliner. Your nearest lumberyard is closer than you think, at the corner of Edgar and Dave, to be exact. The Mariners have assembled a lineup of baseball-punishing professionals. Goodbye, baseball! Nelson Cruz! It's the kind of lineup that makes opposing pitchers' arms and necks all kinds of sore. Fastballs turn to mush. Yeah! Change-ups ridden out of town. Singers left the building, everybody! Curves. Absolutely destroyed! Hello, Safe Go Field. Goodbye, baseballs. Says long gone, Ryan Healy into the bullpen. Mariners baseball, true to the blue. Spend your summer weekend in Seattle catching the Mariners take on the Royals. This series starts tomorrow at 7:10. Saturday, the first 20,000 fans take home a Mariners cap as part of Turn Ahead the Clock Night. And Sunday afternoon, the first 20,000 fans score James Paxton bobblehead. Following the game, kids can run around the bases. Tickets at Mariners.com. Hey, it's Rebecca, and I feel like I'm on a reality cooking show each week. That's because I get a delivery of delicious, organic, local veggies and fruits from Organics to You. I can't wait to figure out how I'm going to turn them into great meals. I'm eating better, I'm supporting local farmers, and the whole family loves it. Zucchini, mushrooms, blueberries, lettuce, even brown rice in the last delivery. All from OrganicsToYou.org. Go to their site, and you can select how much you want, how often you want it, and no contracts. OrganicsToYou.org. Organics to you.org. This is the Lars Larson Show on FM News 101. Welcome back to the Lars Larson Show live from the Bloodworks Live studio. We've got out of my regular studio. David Appel is, is with me, who believes in global warming. Chuck Weiss is with me, who, as I disclosed my dog in the fight, Chuck and I have been friends for a long time. David, let me go to you. You open by saying we have a morals problem that we know how to solve this problem of anthropogenic global warming. Man caused global warming. And we could do it. We just haven't decided that we owe it to future generations to do that. Let me challenge that. This country has less than 5% of its energy coming from all renewables other than hydro. Uh, if you went, add, add up wind and solar, they add up to almost nothing. One third of our power today, the grid that's supplying these lights in here and, and especially across the rest of the country, comes from coal. Some of it comes from natural gas. And when you say we could do this, it's technologically available, how would we today replace 30% of our electric grid to run factories and homes and offices and radio stations when a third of it comes from one fossil fuel, another percentage comes from another fossil fuel, and 20% of it comes from nuclear that even the global warming crowd doesn't seem to like, even though it doesn't have the carbon imp impact that the fossil fuels do, you say it's available. Where is it available? Well, James Hansen, speaking of him, supports nuclear as a bridge to a more sustainable, renewable future. I do too, actually. Uh, a lot of scientists, I'm not a scientist, but a lot of scientists do. Um, we could even replace coal with natural gas, and that's happening already. That reduces CO2 emissions. It doesn't eliminate them, but it makes the situation better. And this is happening already because of economics. It's just cheaper to have a, a natural gas-fired plant. But isn't it fair to say that those who believe, as you do, in anthropog anthropogenic global warming don't like natural gas either. While it reduces, it is still a fossil fuel, a and they, uh, they actively oppose the use of that fuel. So you've got maybe 50% uh, of our grid that needs to be replaced. You say it's available. Where's that energy going to come from? Some people think, I mean, we do eventually need to come to a carbon-free society. How would we do that? 
Solar, wind, nuclear, solar and wind power. are one are less than five percent. How do you power cars and trains and trucks to get the food to grow the food and to deliver it to people? Electricity. There, are, electricity there are, will there run electric big trains, buses, carrying. electric trains. Electric trains. No, no, I'm not talking about people transportation. I'm saying hundreds of millions, if not billions of tons of food and materials has to be moved around our country. Even if you say, I walk to work or I ride a bicycle, you've got to have food and goods, sure. and that weighs hundreds of billions of tons, and it has to be moved. How would we move it, and where would the electricity come from? Well, electric trucks like Tesla is developing. But where does the electricity come from? It comes from non-carbon, any non-carbon source. What are those sources that Solar, are available? Solar, wind, geothermal, uh, nuclear, hydropower. Geothermal's been rejected for environmental re re reasons for the most part. Nuclear is rejected by the AGW okay. crowd, the anthropogenic global warming crowd. They don't like na natural gas. So you've got to replace half the grid and you haven't told me where it's going to come from, except okay. one source that currently, even with tens of billions, of, hundreds of billions of dollars in subsidies, now accounts for less than 5% of the grid. You need yes. to multiply that by 10 just to get to 50%. Yes, How would to, you do that? Uh, massive research in renewables, money to infrastructure. Yes, we have to make a big change. That's going to cost some money. And... I think it's worth not doing money. That. How do you do it practically? For example, the wind do doesn't we, blow all the time. Right. It blows about a third of the time. The yeah. sun doesn't sh shine, but year round, about one third of the time, when you get full output, a lot of the country mm. is not in a place where solar sure. is that good. What do you use as the backup to that power source when the sun isn't shining and the wind isn't blowing? Even if I assumed we had ten times the windmills and solar panels. It's going to take a while to get there. But in Australia... Not a while, not a time. How do you... No, repl in, no, Australia, what's the for in Australia, for example, Tesla yeah. built a big battery. And that battery picks, kicks in when wind and solar are, are deficient. That, that battery powers 40,000 homes with, with energy needed okay, in this David, span. Before I go to Chuck's response, let me ask you. If the sun and the wind blow, blow or shine about one-third of the time, you have a battery that's being consumed 24 hours a day, but it's only being charged one-third of the day. I'm not a scientist, but that doesn't sound like it works. It kicks in when the energy is insufficient. Let me just say, though, we don't have all the answers. We definitely need to find answers. We need massive research and development towards finding those answers. But if we don't do that, we're going to be facing a future that's very warm and very uncomfortable. Let me ask Chuck for his response. You heard mine. If I'm off base, correct me. Uh, these arguments to me, Lars, are irrelevant because you have to assign blame to what causes the warming, what causes cooling, and this sort of thing. And before the break, I was saying if you're going to blame carbon dioxide for causing the temperature changes and then these so-called solutions David's talking about, two things have to happen. You have to see the radiation sign signature from outer space, right. and you have to see warming in the upper troposphere that's about three times what it is at the ground. If we look at the actual record since uh, these climate forecasts were made by Hansen and and all the other climate computer codes that are used today. Both of those things have failed. Well, stop for a second. David, what do you say to that? That's, he says that they're not seeing that in the satellite data. That's flat earthism. I'm sorry. What? It's, it's equivalent to saying the earth is flat. No, but, but uh, are, 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 are you seeing that in, signature? Yes, those signatures are seen. No, there are no. several papers. John Harris wrote a paper in 2001. No. Hey, you look Daniel at Feldman wrote a paper in 2015 in Nature Climate Change. Okay, can I? Raphael Filippona. Okay, then, then let me get Raphael Filippona published a paper in 2004, all showing changes in the spectral outgoing radiance or surface radiance due to CO2 changes. Right, Chuck? This is settled science. Chuck? They, they do it around the bands of CO2. I'm talking about spectrally integrated radiation, which has, it's completely different. But let me read something. Since he says that I'm wrong about this, here's a couple of postdocs out of MIT that were talking about this very same thing. This goes to show you how absurd this thing is getting. They say, uh, uh, these, these guys are Aaron Donahue, he's now at the University of Washington, and he says, uh, in a computer modeling of the Earth's climate under elevating CO2 concentration, 
concentrations, the greenhouse gas effect does indeed lead to global warming. Yet, something puzzling happens. While one would expect the long-way radiation that escapes into space to decline with increasing CO2, the amount actually begins to rise. This is what I'm talking about. This is what the satellites are showing us right now from outer space. Well, you're arguing with a guy that that specializes in this, David. And he's saying saying that we actually see the OLR go up, and it did go up. It's in the records, and it's there. You can see it if you want. It's off the NOAA satellites. Uh, So so what this means is, is if the radiation actually went up rather than down like the model's forecast, the warming you're getting is natural. You had an external source of energy come in and cause the OLR to go up. If the, if the greenhouse gases are causing this, the OLR has to go down according no. to the climate codes, and it didn't do that. It only no. does that around the bands this, uh, of CO2, the, uh, the whole band itself over all the, uh, the long wave. It has actually gone up, which means the warming was caused by increasing amount of sun getting to the surface. And I've got another paper I can, I can uh, reference to that, too, that shows that the... Um, the cloud uh, cover of the Earth has actually decreased some about 25 years ago, and it hasn't changed since. All right. Rather- David, David, hold up a <laughs> second. I want to give you a last question for this segment. David, if you and other advocates of climate change or global warming, whatever you want to call it, convince the people and our representatives to make the changes you want, eliminate half the grid, replace it with something we haven't found yet, how much of a difference is it going to make in temperature over the next, say, half century? And will it be worth the cost that people are going to have to pay pay in their lives, in lost jobs, in lost income, in lost opportunities? Will it be worth the cost? Yes, because eliminating coal saves lives. Coal is a very bad air pollutant. It produces... uh, Even from a modern plant? Even from a modern plant, yes. Coal kills like 10,000 people in the country every year. If we eliminated coal, I just saw a study, we could save 163 million premature deaths by 2030. Look at Beijing. Will that model be better than the James Hansen model? That, ha- that model, was, James and Hansen's model was right. We're not oh, going to be able to get... Yes, it was. Just to read the, look at the chain. Hansen has failed in everything he ever said that it was going to happen. With Chuck, I very much agree same, with that. Yeah, I, I have to disagree with question, that. Because I want to ask the same question I asked David, and that is, if we make the changes they are suggesting, Chuck, what's it going to cost, and will it be worth the cost, and how much net difference will it make? No, it'll make absolutely no difference because you can get into this argument about what's causing the warming, and I can prove with these records that it wasn't CO2. No, but then can't. but then there's another argument you can even make with CO2 to show that if you take all these emission uh, reduction strategies that the governments want to impose on us, including carbon taxes, it won't make one iota a difference to affecting the true atmospheric concentration no. of CO2. Nothing is going to change from that, and you can't control it because nature controls most of the CO2 that we have in the atmosphere. And there there's research on this right now, which is uh, coming out, which which demonstrates this quite well. We're, our effect on on the CO, total CO2 in the atmosphere is minuscule. It's about 4.4 percent of the total uh, of the 410 parts per million we have in the troposphere right now. And so anything that you try to do to mitigate this is going to have no effect on the climate. It's a complete ripoff. It's a waste of money. You're just throwing it away to the government, and you're not going to get anything for it. David, I want to ask you a question. I've got a break in one minute. You have one minute to answer this. You know what the medieval warming period is? It lasted 300 years. It got a lot warmer on Earth. No, it wasn't global. It was a regional phenomenon. No, it wasn't. Okay. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Look at the Pages 2 case study. <laughs> I did. I've looked at them. It was, it was, it was it global. It only happened over Europe, global. Global. Europe, global. Europe, David? Europe and North America. It wasn't oh, a global phenomenon. Oh, only Europe and North America. It wasn't global, global warming. It's okay. not true. Hold, stop for a second. Here's the question. Now you got to respond to You've got 30 to answer to it. How do you know that whatever warming we might be seeing now wouldn't be natural just like that was? Because there are no natural known changes factors that can be causing warming right now. The sun is actually getting slightly cooler over the last 50 years. There are no volcanic CO2 emissions. There are no known factors that can be causing warming. In fact, we should be causing a slight cooling right now with only natural factors. We're going to be back in just a moment. We're live in the Bloodworks Live studio and live on the Radio Northwest Network. It's Weather Wars today. We'll be back to sum up, and you've got the Lars Larson Show. And here's Brett Recam. Here we go, Lars. A Ramjack West Foundation Repair can be a big investment. People who do their homework choose Ramjack West. Get your free foundation evaluation. Call 877 Ramjack. All right, southbound I 5, a crash at Boone's Ferry has been cleared. 
And you're now looking at just about a delay of maybe 15 minutes from 99W through the Boone's Ferry area. Still kind of trying to work our way out of there, but all lanes are back open. Southbound I-5. Northbound I-5, a little heavy through those curves. Then the trip through North Portland to Vancouver is up to 21 minutes. Inbound on the sunset. Slow most of the way from Sylvan up to the Vista Ridge Tunnel. I'm Brett Recamp. Stay connected with Portland's most traffic 24-7 on FM News 101. Here is KGW's Rod Hill. Getting closer to the weekend and, of course, July 4th, next Wednesday. The forecast update, 70 this afternoon, partly cloudy, just a slight spotty shower chance. Going into the weekend, mostly sunny, near 80 on Saturday and Sunday. And right now, skipping to July 4th, partly cloudy and 77. I'm KGW's Rod Hill for FM News 101. Take a look outside your home, and then take a look outside the business you run, and take a look at the asphalt. Look at it closely. If it's starting to crumble away, you need to call the pros at Signature Paving Services. They'll save you a lot of money. They can make repairs or just maintain your pavement before it goes bad. I can tell you that from personal experience. We had a nasty-looking driveway, and then Mike and his team from Signature showed up. Our driveway had certainly seen better days. It looked terrible. Well, Signature fixed all of that quickly, and it still looks great today. With occasional upkeep, it'll be safer and more attractive, and ours always has been with their care. Regular maintenance extends the life of your surface while minimizing the cost. Business owners, Signature Paving has years of experience minimizing disruption to business on commercial projects. Call the pros at Signature Paving. They'll make your property look its best on time and on budget. Call today at 503 554 80 553 or visit signaturepavingservices.com signature their name your guarantee ccb 135293 oh we got them here in the northwest we got lots of places for your new jeep from dick hanna chrysler jeep dodge in the giant vancouver automobile we got mountain passes fishing streams hunting fields your jeep takes you through snow to ski trips but look at this we've also got concerts and posh restaurants and the symphony your jeep just loves taking you to all those places forging its own roads or keeping to the existing ones equally well and here's one of the largest jeep inventories in the entire northwest making dick Hanna one of the largest dealers we're pretty proud of that we're proud of our job finding the perfect vehicle for you at the best price possible too if you're looking to buy one, even if you have a challenging credit situation, we know the vehicles and how to get you financed. Check out our online reviews and then come on over to Dick Hanna Chrysler Jeep Dodge in the giant Vancouver Auto Mall during the Jeep Celebration event right between the bridges with no Washington sales tax to Oregon residents. Dick Hanna dealerships. Believe in nice. Let's make a splash with hot summer fun at a a all summer long, we've got the hottest concerts in the Cowlitz Ballroom, free shows at Muse, and the Endless Summer Giveaway, with over $200,000 in cash and prizes, including a Fun in the Sun Mastercraft Wake and Ski Boat. Don't miss the next prize drawing on July 22nd. Hot summer fun at a a It's like nothing else. Mastercraft is not an official sponsor. Make and model may vary. Must be 21. Rules and restrictions apply. Proper ID required. Visit alanaresort.com for details. Stone Northwest, the Portland area's best natural stone provider, is having their annual summer stone blowout sale. Hurry in now to the Camas and Vancouver stores for savings on all types of natural stone. Whether you do it yourself or hire contractors, Stone Northwest has boulders, flagstones, stepstones, wall stone, natural stone fountains, and bubblers too. Our products are perfect for your gardens, patios, and interior design projects. Need a project idea? Visit Stone and NW.com. The summer stone blowout won't last long, so visit Stone Northwest today. Trust me when I tell you this, there's only one real estate team that Tina and I would ever use when it comes to selling our house, and that's Aaron Ryan and his team at the Ryan Group. They're the most efficient, effective, and professional team in the business. When considering protection for your biggest asset, I guarantee the Ryan Group will blow you away with their results. It's the number one real estate team in the area. If they can't sell your home in 29 days or less, they'll step up and buy it. You've heard other companies say they'll guarantee to sell your home, and if they can't, they'll sell it for free. Now suddenly doing it for free is going to change the fact that they couldn't sell it in the first place? Work with a company that has proven results and the Ryan Group's marketing plan will get you top dollar and sell your home faster than anyone else out there. They've helped thousands of our listeners and they can put the guarantee to work for you. Call up the Ryan Group at 503-343-1666 on the web 29andgone.com. That's 343-1666 or 29andgone.com. 
Good Morning Start with KGW News at Sunrise. Join Brenda Braxton, Ashley Corslin. Weather with Rod Hill. Here's Portland. Sunny. <laughs> Weekdays on KGW News at Sunrise, 4.30 to 7 a.m. on Channel 8. Here's what's happening at FM News 101. Celebrate Independence Day at Vancouver's Fireworks Spectacular, presented by Columbia Credit Union. Fireworks are free to the public and begin at 10.05 p.m. from Fort Vancouver. More information at KXL.com. Home to the Northwest's number one talk show host, Lars. This is FM News 101. Welcome back to the Lars Larson Show. We're calling it Weather Wars, and I have to say, during the last break, it almost come to blows, but uh, we, we've fortunately achieved a peace treaty, much like between North Korea and South Korea. It's tentative. It's got a guarded DMZ between it. Uh, David Appel is with us here in studio a believer in global warming and climate change. Chuck Weiss, a consistent skeptic against global warming. David, since you opened today's debate, I'll give you the first summation and let Chuck have the last word. You have about a minute and a half. Uh, first, I want to say that no, I don't believe in global warming. No scientist believes in global warming. They're convinced by the evidence. And the evidence is now overwhelming. Every year I go to a conference in San Francisco of geoscientists, 22,000 people, not one scientist disagrees with the fact that man is causing global warming. It's a given. The question is, how bad is it going to be, and what might we do about it? The number of scientists who, don't, who are skeptics, you can count them on two fingers, really, versus tens of thousands of other scientists. CO2 is a greenhouse gas. Why would scientists say it wasn't if it wasn't? This has been known since 1859 that CO2 absorbs heat radiation. The first climate model was built in 1896. There was a 1964 report to the Johnson administration warning about CO2 and global warming. Climate models were built throughout the 20th century. The first one that was really good was built in 1967 by a Japanese scientist at Princeton. It correctly predicted the Earth's surface temperature, and it's gone on since then. Hansen's predictions, unfortunately we can't get into the details, they were right on when you compare what actually happened to what he said was gonna happen. There is just no scientific debate about this question. The question is, how will it play out, how long, how high? Chuck? David, as usual, is wrong again. He assigns the blame of CO2 to warming the Earth's climate, and he fails to realize when you mix CO2 and water vapor, they don't get along. They don't amplify warming. They cause an opposite effect. The feedbacks with water vapor are demonstrated in the troposphere to be negative, negating the effect of uh, the CO2 radiation on Earth temperature. And, uh, and so... All of these ideas have failed, and it's, it's, no, I, it's no surprise that the climate models have failed as well. The, everything inside the Earth's... Uh, uh, do you mind? Hold on, David. Don't, you, know, you can't throw him studies in the middle of his a, summation. It's a figure, a very simple figure. Charts. He'll rather ignore. So, uh, so every one of Appel's ideas are wrong. The warming that we've experienced is natural. It's, it's in the uh, temperature records that go back many thousands of years. There's nothing unusual about this one that compares to any of the others. Even if you exclude all the radiation, you've got to consider that. The CO2 argument's gone by the wayside because the claims of it uh, that we can actually reduce it to anything meaningful are just ridiculous. You can go into that at another time. But to sum everything up, uh, we're not seeing anything unusual with the climate. The solutions are ludicrous because they're not going to make any difference to the climate one way or the other. And at some point, the climate's going to turn around and things will get colder again, regardless of the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. That's just plain physics, sound physics. It'll take 100,000 years for that. No, it won't. David, I want to thank you for coming in. Chuck, I want to thank you for coming down. Let me give you my final thoughts, because I've been an investigative reporter for a long time. And the first lesson you learn is follow the money. I believe that the science, so-called, on this has been driven by money. Hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, flushed out by various presidential administrations, both Republican and Democrat, that has paid scientists to tell one story and not paid them to be skeptical. For what little science I did, I thought the scientific method was gather the data, 
form a theory. And then if you find data that doesn't match with your theory, like when you pr predict that there's going to be warming, and then for some reason the warming doesn't happen, then you have to conclude that maybe it's not going to happen. I also believe that a lot of other people, including those in government and those in private industry, have made and continue to make large sums of money by advocating for so-called climate change or global warming. They get and, and that the potential for the cost to human beings is going to be loss of jobs, loss of economic opportunity, and trillions of dollars flushed by their governments over this. But I appreciate both of you coming, and you're listening to The Lars Larson Show. FM News 101 KXL. Hey, it's Brett Recamp, and Shell Fit Car has put the health of my car in the palm of my hand. 